Hey friends, Jessica here with Creators Couture. So in this tutorial, we are going to be making this digital background like you see here. And we are going to use some tricks and tips. And you're going to be shocked at how fast and easy it is. So let's get started. So what we're actually going to do is start with an image. And this is the one that I found on Unsplash. Hi. So we are going to go from this image and use that as a guide and create a digital background like this. And it's absolutely so easy. So I will actually link the, um, the digital image that I found is actually on Unsplash. And what's really cool is I liked this. I was looking for something colorful. So I think I just typed in colorful and this came up and I thought, okay, this is cool. It has the color, the colors I just love. So what I did is I didn't even have to download it. Honestly, I just screenshotted it and then opened my screenshot here in Photoshop. So there we've got the photo. So let's just kind of let me pull back the pull back the layers and show you how I created this and it's so easy. So let's just take back all the layers here. And what I started with was actually this uh, document. So um, I'll have this document down below. You can download it for free. It's just a template. So basically like I've pointed this out in a few of my videos. What I like to do is if I'm creating something that say in the end is going to be 1500 by 1500 pixels or five by five by five inches, um, I'll create a document that's 1700 by 1700 and create a little preview crop here. Uh, and that way, if I draw something, I need, need to move it around. It's not going to be cut totally off of the side. So it gives me a little wiggle room. So I just, what I ha did is just dropped that image into this document and let me hide my preview here. So I, do I dropped it and I didn't even care. I free transformed it and squished it because all I care about is getting the colors. So I got the colors in the area that is actually going to be my final size. But what I want to do is um, I duplicated it and expanded it to fill my whole thing because that way I won't get any, um, I'm using this image as a pattern for my pattern stamp brushes. So that way, if I go off the side, I, I won't get any of that like gray color from the side coming in. So you'll see later what I mean. And what we are using here is going to be my impressionist color blending brushes, which most of you guys are familiar with. Um, but we're actually kind of using it in the Instapressionist technique um, with the pixels aligned. So I'll explain more later, but if you don't know about my color blending brushes, I'll have a link down below so you can get all caught up. I have a great blog post tutorial to show you how that works, but I don't want to go over it in every video because then it would be very long. So now I've got the color background that I want to use and we are going to define this background as a pattern. So I'm going to go to, um, and I want to make sure that my crop area is turned off. So I've got the whole document, which is 1700 by 1700. And I'm going to go to file, uh, or sorry, edit, define pattern, or I have a keyboard shortcut command M. And then I don't, I can just leave it that it's fine. I'm going to click okay. And so now that's going to have all the colors that are coming out of my brush are going to be using this colors. And so like, let me get my pattern stamp tool. And most of you guys are quite familiar. Oops, this came over here. Let's whenever you add a new, okay, now it's just deleted. What? Where did it go? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Anyway, I've already done this before, but, um, yeah. So now we've got our color there. What I was going to say is if you are selecting a color palette, if you make a new color palette, it'll like put it right next to it. So you might want to like get out of whatever folder you're working with. So anyway, now we're going to get started and we want to grab our color palette uh, pattern that we just selected. And then most of you guys know if you are using my uh, in impressionist color blending brushes, then all of those colors that are in that little color palette will come shooting out your brush. And normally you always turn off aligned, but this time we want to leave aligned on so that all the colors coming out will essentially stick to the same places in this image. So I want those blobs of orange. I want those blobs of blue blobs of purple in the same space. And cause 
I don't want them all coming out of the same brush stroke because in, in this case if I try to fill the frame with that it will just be like more messy so anyway so we're using the pattern stamp tool we're gonna have we're gonna select the color palette we or the pattern we just created aligned and impressionist and then so now it's gonna really stick to that image so let me just go ahead and put my crop back on I'm gonna turn those off and now we're just gonna fill the background and we're gonna create a layer that's gonna look something like this so this is already a great start so this was modern impressionist brush number two which I love has those really nice streaky long strokes so let me turn that off and let's do that ourselves now so like I said I've got pattern stamp tool aligned impressionist with that that color pattern selected and let's just find our brush so modern oh, excuse the yawns or any um anything I just ate lunch so anyway let's grab modern impressionist brush number two and so now we can just make these brush strokes like this and I'm not going to worry about everything being perfect because um, we can always go back through and I have pressure sensitivity on those modern impressionist brushes so if you push it at full pressure you're going to get the drama like this but if you do it light pressure look how it blends quite nice so you kind of want to have a balance between that but for the background I think I'm just going to go through and just um, have like a medium pressure so I like those streaks and as you can see everything really kind of still sticks to the you could keep brushing and brushing it over the same spot and it will just move a little bit so that pattern of the pattern stamp holds that the colors in the same spots so that makes it just really easy so we can just go through here I could just be like really bold and not worry about anything right now so I'm not going to worry that this looks perfect I'm just going to get that make sure that my background's covered and then I'll just go back through here and kind of have some like up and down motion and look how pretty that's looking I am loving it and you know we're just sampling colors from the image and it's such a shortcut I love it so it's just so much fun so I'm just going through and doing those softer strokes you know you kind of spice it up a little bit but now you can see even if you keep going over you know you can change direction it'll move a little bit which is great um, but essentially you're gonna have like the same kind of colors in the same place but as you can see it's a little bit different every time I just think it's great this is one of my favorite techniques to do. I think I have to like create like a digital background set because a lot of people don't, um, you know, don't work in Photoshop or they want things ready made. So I'm going to try to start making some more ready made stuff for the future. But there we go. And like, let me just show you. Turn that uh, that um, pattern back, uh, the original image. So you can see we have those pockets of blue here. And then if we look, the pockets of blue are still there, or we have the pockets of orange, and they're they're still there. So each each time it's just a little bit different. So that's a really cool way. Ooh, let me get rid of this kind of black here. Sometimes you could have some of the like if there's just a little bit of like black or something in the image, then uh it can come out more when you're using this technique. So that's a great base, and so I'm just gonna leave that. And then what did I do? Okay, so then I added some of these brush strokes, and we're going to use the exact same technique, but we're going to use Modern Impressionist Brush 92. And I think these are just really interesting. Let me just zoom in a little bit on our canvas so we can get a great view here. And so I don't need to change anything about my brush settings or anything like that. All I have to do is just make a new layer because we want to work non destructively. And let's go to Modern Impressionist brush 92 I think it's the last one and let's just paint a little bit so you can just draw some strokes and as you can see it still kind of like uses the same color the same colors but it'll disperse it in a little bit of ways which is great because then we got some of that orange here 
moving over onto the pink so that you can really see those strokes and I just think it's gorgeous. So much fun, so pretty, very artistic. When, once you create like a background like this, you can, you know, you can create a digital paper pack and sell it. You can uh, create some Canva temp templates, Adobe, uh, Adobe Express has, or I think it's, yeah, Adobe Express has their new, you know, kind of a Canva rival. So yeah, I think that's really, really pretty and I'm loving it. So that is Modern Impressionist brush number 92. And then I added a few other strokes, just wanted to kind of spice it up. So this one was um, Artistic Autumn Brush 15. So I just kind of wanted to like add some kind of a rough brush stroke in there. And this one I added above, so let me make a new layer. Not changing anything, only changing the brush. So I'm getting my Artistic Autumn Brush number 15. Okay. <clears throat> and I'll just make some, ah, yeah, see, it's a little bit different. So I'm just going to add some brush strokes in here. And it's just a way to bury up the texture a little bit and creates a little bit in different visual interest. So we've just got some different style of strokes. But as you can see, it still kind of sticks to the same. The, the colors are the distribution is the same. So just to add a little bit of visual interest. Okay, so good enough. There we go. Just add the little little texture there. And then the last thing that I did was I did single color brush strokes in brushwork and I really think that this adds a little something. You've got the kind of canva te canvas texture that comes out in those brush strokes. So let's see here. So I didn't, I think I made like four or five. So let's just turn that off, make a new layer, and then we're gonna grab, now, now we are gonna change our brush. So we're gonna go to the regular brush tool, one color brush. Don't use that very often. Um, you know, I love my multicolor brush strokes. And then I'm going to get brushwork brush number 16. Or you can use any brush that you know you want um, uh, that you have. And so this is a dry brush number 16. And so then I'm just going to go through here and like all with my brush selected, you can always hit Option or Alt and select some color from your canvas. So now with my light pressure I'm just going to go through and draw some strokes and now you can see that canvas texture is coming through and you can make some more dramatic some more light but I think it adds a real something interesting to this um, this composition oh wait I like to add like some you got this pocket of purple so then i like to have some purple coming out of that or say get this blue here and it's coming down from the blue and there we go so you know just till you feel good so i think it's super cool so we've got a really interesting visual we've got layers of texture here and i think that's so interesting and then the last thing for me to do, you know, it's so hard for me to like not put some gold on everything. <laughs> so my last step was to add a little bit of gold because I love it. Oh, when do I just, I'm so gold obsessed. And I think this is one of my, gosh, I don't even know which. Um, oh yeah, this is one of my Celestial Gold Mine Gold Layer Styles. Um, and let me just duplicate this. So I'll just like, I'll make a new, make a new layer. And I'm going to go to my layer styles and I don't have all of my styles in my, um, in my styles panel. I keep some like just the selection. So I'll just grab one of the gold and just go ahead and apply that to my layer before I start painting and then I can adjust it later. So, um, according to my, uh, notes here, uh, I was kind of, when I'm thinking about it, I write what brush I used on each layer. Cause that way if I come back, you know, I know which brush it is. So this is starry brush number 22 and four. And let me just see which collection they, I wanna say this is from my um, galaxy collection. Hold on one second. I think it might be from two different collections. Okay, 
Oh, no, no, no. There is a Starry collection. This one, this collection is actually with my little Vuv Cluco inspired kit. I should sometimes, it's hard because I'll have like a brush collection inside of a color palette kit, but the brush collection doesn't maybe get as much uh, um, fanfare because I, it's with the color palettes. But anyway, I do like to use these ones and these are really fun decorative brushes. So I had the brush number 22, which is a little starry sort of brush. So look at that, so pretty. So we're just adding those little starry accents. And I'll link all the brushes that I use down below so you can have them. So I just added some starry sparkles around there. I think it's gorgeous, loves it. And then I added some brush number four. So some little starry things. And I just kind of add them in like, I like kind of uh, little pockets of three. Or, you know, some by themselves. Look how pretty that is. It's so cool what you can do. And Photoshop makes it so easy. I know everybody's like, you know, all about Procreate now, but I personally, I like to work at my desk because I don't want to be bent over an iPad. My back is bad enough. And there's just, there's so many things like layer styles, the pattern stamp technique, the wet paintbrush technique that makes my life so easy. And having it all here at the desktop is just my workflows really fast. So um, I am going to try to like, you know, adapt some of my things that I can a little bit for Procreate. It's just hard because the brush engine is totally different. But yeah, having things like layer styles um, and having all my libraries here just makes creating so much fast, so fast and so fun. And then you can create something like this. Zero, you know, um drawing talent needed and then all of the the tools like the pattern stamp tool in photoshop make our life so easy and so much fun and it's really cool to be able to see that image and kind of zoom out and go oh hey i just like those colors let me make an abstract background inspired by that and so now you can do whatever you like with this so i will have um for this one i will have the demo psd available for my behance members and I'll put all the brushes down below um, from my website. So if you have any questions, let me know. Hopefully you appreciated this technique. And if you have any suggestions, things you'd like me to see, um, things you'd like me to demonstrate, just put them down below in the comments. And I'm always happy to get feedback from you guys and hear what you want to see next. And I will just see you on the next video.